begun to record this. And then we record this. Okay, all right. And we're syncing everything up. Three, two, one. Hello, hello again. Welcome back. My name is Juan John John, and this is the new studio-ish thing. So, sorry, unfortunately, I was unable to record my computer screen because I forgot to press the record button. That's 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 why you didn't get a screen of what BRV was doing. Sorry about that. But anyways, my name is Juan John John, and this is my newish all-in-one modular VRV setup thing. So, as you know, my past two songs I've been futzing around with combining my hardware with a software. The first was, of course, AS, a A9S2, which was the hardware with me playing some stuff on one of Rolly's preset noises. And my second song was actually a hardware my hardware modular synth kind of sort of bringing in the beats and why are you going red all the time okay so spontaneous okay nope okay we're just gonna have to be careful on how we talk so this was my hardware synth and i was playing a sort of sound generated by vrv rack controlled by Rolly. so now i decided for this song to do something entirely with vrv rack and vrv rack alone so yeah let's just explore what i did and what i've done so i'm gonna put that back and we're gonna unmute so you can hear some stuff going on vaguely in the background i have a sort of generative sort of drum patch along with a reverby type of sound so let's talk about the lead sound that i'm playing so this is of course my rolly now this rolly is hooked up to a grand variety of things let me just bring the laptop a bit closer hopefully this doesn't disconnect it So yeah, I, I made this really spaced out, really strange, spacey noise, basically. And this is ba -ba -da -da, made from a variety of sources. The first is the FMOP, which is, as you can see, from the Bog Audio setup, from the Bog Audio collection of uh modules i'll put links in the description to where i get all my modules and what i'm using in here but yeah this is the fmop which is controlled mainly through gates coming from the midi cv converter and yeah basically i'm just playing this particular little preset well, not really preset, but yeah, basically everything is going in here from the Rolly, the volt per octave, the gate. The gate is also heading into this envelope generator, but we'll talk about that later. And yeah. And I also have this controlling, I also have the pressure controlling the level, so the harder I press the louder it should get, but that's a bit lost with the reverb and all of the distortion I'm going through. So yeah, after this, I'm putting it through the Death Crush, a module by Sonus Modular. It's this really cool little... Honestly, I'm not sure how... To, it's a bit crusher, basically. As you can see, you can get really crunchy and really distorted noises out of this but I don't do that I prefer to have it on this level let me just make sure I have it on where it was and I also have it going through the biter which does it I'm honestly not sure what the biter does in all honesty it 
sort of distorts noise is as best as I can describe it. I mean, honestly, all I know is that when I put things through it, it makes it sound different. As you can see, you got three settings and you got eight of these and I have no idea what they do, but I know that I like the sound of this noise when I put it in and I just put everything down. It made it really distorted, really crunchy, and I really liked it. And afterwards, we go into the delay plug FX, which comes from AS. That's all. That's what they're called, AS. And this is your general delay plug-in type deal. You, of course, you know, edit things, which will futz with how it goes. We have this and this. And this is being modulated by the envelope generator. And let me just turn things back to how they once were. So yeah, this is being modulated by the envelope generator, which is basically just... causing all sorts of weirdness to go on when modulating the time, the FD, BDK, and the color. Honestly, as far as I can, like, okay, right, what are you doing now? Okay, so two of my three modulation sources aren't actually doing anything at the moment. That's just fantastic. That's lovely. I'm gonna feel really stupid if they didn't do anything during the song. But yeah. And from there, of course, we have this going into the Neil, which is ba -ba -da -da, from Parable Instruments, which is a fantastic little reverb, which I believe is based off of clouds, if I'm not mistaken, or something else. Or maybe it's just, uh, just because they use the same knobs as the audible instruments, mutable instruments based stuff that I'm a bit confused. But anyways, I really love this reverb. It's really lush. You can get all sorts of weirdness going on with this thing. Like, just as you can see from the picture of this planet, or at least I'm guessing this is a planet, you can just make your stuff sound like it's going to space. And I'm a big fan of going to space. So yeah. You know, that just makes incredible textures and incredible sort of background noise. And it just, uh, lovely. Okay. Alright, so that's enough about how I made this particular noise. Let's talk about the rest of the noises. And for that, we'll turn over to here. Now then, I'm gonna try something a bit different and see if I can make this... You quiet down. See if I can make this work. Let me try something real quick. Okay. Trying new thing in 3, 2, 1. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. And this is the touch... OSC. For those of you who don't know, Touch OSC is a sort of iOS specific little MIDI controller that you can use with any iOS device of the current generation, a couple generations back. But this is Touch OSC on my iPad. And I'm using this to control mainly the randomized features of a couple of key randomized features of the marbles, or the thank you for yelling at me phone, that is very much appreciated, but I'm basically using this to sort of control my patch, so let me just show you what I mean. There we go. It seems to have disconnected briefly, so I'm just going to put everything back. But as you can see, I have this controlling my patch. Now, 
among the things I'm doing, first of all, is a quick little mute button right here. None of these buttons actually do anything. I just have this mute button here. And this is sort of one of the... This isn't a custom-made thing. This is sort of a preset... Uh, this is a preset sort of control panel. There's three options. Each of them do different things, but I'm not really futzing around with these. This is the one I'm using because it just came with the synth. So anyways, so here I have this controlling different aspects of the sort of VRV patch that you see on the screen. So the first aspect is these four little sliders all control marbles. So now this one controls the right hand, uh, the left hand, I mean, bias fil filter. As you can see by warping this around, I can sort of have this shift around exactly what I want. So if I have it on the lower hand side, this will put the bias towards the, where is this godforsaken cable going towards? So this will have it towards the resonator, which makes this sort of strummy noise. And the higher I put it, the more instead we get to hear this particular one, which is, ba, 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 which goes to the tidal modulator. Yeah, that goes there. And then we have this one, which is controlling the bias on the right hand side, which futzes around with the which modulates the all of the non-trigger slash gate modulations. That's the sort of random volt per octave information and the random sort of modulation information that the random sampler outputs, basically. Then we have this particular wire, which, what do you do? I completely forgot what you do. You modulate the spread. So as you can see, the lower I go, it does, yeah, as you can see, it sort of gets more different notes, and the higher I go, everything gets stuck towards a higher sort of note taking. And then we have the red knob, which controls the clock. I don't really use this much, but I just wanted to have a clock control so I can just sort of... You know, I thought about doing some sort of fill-like thing, but I didn't really use it. I used it once, and it didn't really sound good, so for the most part, I didn't futz with that. And we also have this bottom row, which controls the jitter. Now, the jitter is a sort of... The best way I can describe it is one of the most aggressive... What is it called? The, um... I'm totally blanking on the term, but in regular music programs, this is the sort of make this sound more human, add a bit of randomness to the clock. This is possibly... the most aggressive one of these I've ever come across. Like, as you can just see, when cranked up fully, it goes wild, and I use this to engage some really ominous sounding stuff at the end of the song, as you might have noticed. But yeah, next we come towards... Okay, let me just... Okay, so as you can see, this middle part
Actually, no, that's not what that controls. What am I doing? Okay, what does the middle part control? I've completely forgotten. Okay, so this controls. As I was saying, this controls the modal synthesizer, which is the sort of the sort of buzzing, the sort of chirpy noise you hear. Except now, Okay, you, you were making all sorts of strange noises, and now you're not making any of those noises. See, this is the joy and the absolute frustration of working with something that works so much randomness, because yesterday I was making these really, really ominous noises, and now I can't get it to make the ominous noises. Now it's just making a bunch of chirpy noises. Lovely. But as you can see, this is hooked up to the model synthesizer. And I have this hooked up towards the FM, as you can hear there, the frequency modulation. I also have this hooked up to the timber. And I have it also hooked up towards the red timber. There we go, those are the noises I want. And finally, the last one I have hooked up towards the mallet. So I can make it make either of these noises. And yeah, now it's doing a lot of this. So I can have it, these really crystalline, high pitched noises. Or I can have it make these really abrupt trumpet noises. Now let's talk about the last thing I did, the title modulator. Now the title modulator is an oscillator that's basically constantly going off no matter what I do. So what I did is, first thing first, is I hooked the gate up to another copy of this envelope generator via the, what is it called again? Bog Audio, the Bog Audio Complex Envelope Generator. And I just had that generate an envelope I like that would follow the trigger, and that's sort of futzing with this VCA that the oscillator is connected to. Now these, I have hooked up the A. Where are ya? I have that hooked up to the shape. So I can futz around with the shape. B, I have hooked up to slope. So you can get some modulation like that. And C is going towards the smoothness. So we get that to that. Just lots of high pitch stuff. And D I've hooked up towards it's FM. 
So as you can see there, I'm gonna do all sorts of stuff. And yeah, that's basically what I did for that. And when you put it all together, you get something that sounds... a bit like this. So yeah, that's how I made this patch, and that's a sort of quick little explanation. I really wish you could have seen everything in movement, but I forgot to hit the record button so it didn't record. Sorry about that. But anyways, this has been a sort of look at Roly and look at integrating Roly and my iPad into VRV work, and yeah. Okay, I shall see you all later. Goodbye. I think. Oh yeah, by the way, this song is available to people who sign up for my monthly Bandcamp thing, and it will be available for 100% free for the first 200 people if you download it when the album comes out, and it'll be mixed and mastered and everything. So yeah, see y'all later. Goodbye.